in the most unusual of times, the world. It is very weird. Our world often feels no bigger than one block in one neighborhood. We can't see family, we can't see friends. It's hard that my kids can't see their grandparents right now. Stephanie lives here. It has been a challenge. Rebecca, uh, I, over there. I miss being around people a lot. And Erica. I am feeling better than I felt in a long time. Erica finally feels safe going outside after a week and a half of what doctors believe was COVID. I mean, it was, it's crazy to think about how winded I could get just bringing a load of laundry up the stairs. If this is a battle, neighborhoods have become modern day front lines. Our new normal is doing a lot of school from home. She understands that there's something going on that we have to make sure we're protecting ourselves. You can't go visit your friends. You know, you just can't do the things that you normally would do. Front lines filled with stories of struggle. Everything's on hold and, and that's the hard part too. And stories. Yeah, it was tough. Of sacrifice. Ask Tom who's just down the road. We don't know how she got the coronavirus. We really don't. Rushed to the ER, his wife of 30 years could hardly breathe. Inside a Vista Adventist hospital in Louisville, doctors decided only a ventilator might save her life. Just a lot of unknowns. Word spread, like words tend to spread. So I found out that she was sick um, from her husband, Tom. I started getting worried we were never going to see her again. So that was really hard to hear. And so for six days, neighbors did what neighbors tend to do. We were praying for her every day while she was in the hospital. Until one day. OK, here we go. A woman so dearly missed did something most COVID patients on ventilators never do, which is why now is almost certainly as good of a time as ever to introduce you to Nancy Clark. It's nice to meet you. Well, how the heck are you? I'll tell you, it's been a day out of the drug. <laughs> From the second floor of a hospital staffed by people who saved her life, Nancy recalled the moment she reopened her eyes. And I had no idea where I was. I had no idea. I had no idea what was going on. And that part just scared me to death. Scared to death, yet very much alive ready to go. But I feel pretty fortunate that I am. I wouldn't trade my kid and my husband for anything. It's like I want to go home. I just want to go home. And get my life back. That day in Colorado, 203 COVID patients left Colorado hospitals and headed home. Going home. I'm going home. <laughs> home. It was hard. I mean, we, we prayed a lot for her, so we're happy that she's home. In the most unusual of times, our world feels smaller. No, it's not the same at all. But it is here in neighborhoods filled with neighbors. Yes. <laughs> She loves cats. And it stuff. is here where small victories are celebrated. So it's nice to have her home. Celebrated in deeply personal ways. Uh, it's unbelievable. Just ask Tom, who's down the road. Yeah, I'm just glad she's home finally. Nancy is home. I feel very fortunate. I feel very lucky. I feel like the people at the hospital saved my life. And when this is all over, the neighborhood plans on celebrating this like neighborhoods tend to do, together. I was so excited just to come home. Chris Vanderveen. And it was as good as I expected it to be. <laughs> Nine News.